Hello, happy Monday. Welcome back to another Marvel Champions live stream. Today we're continuing on in the Marvel Champions cinematic universe, which is where I am playing through all the movies. And we're playing through the movies, we're playing through them in thematic matchups with thematic deck builds, breaking a couple of those rules. But we are on Iron Man 1, the actual first. Well, okay. I think Iron Man 1 came out before the Hulk. I sh definitely should have looked that up first. But, yeah. Iron Man 1. Yeah. Anyways. Iron Man 1. We did <laughs> we did Captain America, the first Avenger, as well as Captain Marvel last, or two weeks ago. And now, Iron Man came out before the Incredible Hulk. Okay, cool. <laughs> I, I panicked there for a second. But the Incredible Hulk is... It's a, that's a that's a movie that's a that's a masterpiece right there um but yeah so we're gonna be doing iron man one and then iron man two uh cinematically chronologically came out right there at the end of iron man one so we're gonna be playing through iron man one and iron man two you actually like the incredible hulk a lot nice yeah i i haven't seen it in a long time i am doing or as as i'm playing through this i am re-watching them all as well I didn't do that with uh, Cap and well, Captain Cap, Captain America, and Captain Marvel, but I did start with Iron Man. Um, and right now, I'm watching Thor because Thor and Incredible Hulk are next up chronologically, and so we'll uh, we'll see if the opinions have changed. Hulk is one of your favorite heroes too. I make a lot of comments on D20 stream again. It nice. Hey, how's it going, Mozilla? Okay, so. There, we're, we're starting to get into some of the matchups that do not have one-to-one -one matchups in the game. And that is fine, but... Hold on, I have to get this name right because it's, it's fun. Maggie Doladine, um, a couple weeks ago, gave a lot of suggestions on matchups that work thematically. And I have to very giving them a big shout out because some of these are very creative so iron man one we're taking iron man against norman osborne to represent obadiah and his treacherous betrayal of tony stark in that movie and so it's kind of the criminal enterprise type thematic or the the vibe that we're going for and so we're going to be playing risky business which is actually i think maybe one of the first times if not the first time I've ever played Risky Business on stream. And so that's also kind of fun because I, uh, I I went to Dragon Shield Clear Mats about a year ago in for my uh, for my cards, my sleeves. And I was just, whenever I took out a new hero or a new villain and they had the old sleeves on them, I, I swapped them out. And I had to swap out sleeves for Norman before setting up and getting ready for this stream. And I think he was the last one. I think everybody, all of my other cards have been transferred into the new sleeves. But it's been over a year since I've played Norman Osborn. So, so that's kind of fun. He's, uh, he's really interesting. He's really fun. He has the dual-sided card where you're flipping him from Green Goblin to Norman. Back and forth. And, oh, poor Norman, right? <laughs> uh, and and he, he has different abilities when he does that. And so... Um, I, I'm excited to play him. I really enjoy uh, Risky Business. Beast Snow had some people come over yesterday. One newbie who had never played and they picked Risky Business. What if... Oh, yeah. That's a great one to start out with. Who who all did everyone play? And then we will talk about our deck build. And so we are doing thematic deck builds here. Meaning that... Well, I guess I really haven't given a definition to, <laughs> to what I mean by that. But I, I am making deck building choices based off of the movie or the vibe. I'm trying to do that. And so to start us out, we do have Agent Coulson coming in for... Um, he's, he's, in, he's in the movie. Also, one of the things that I watched recently, they have like these Marvel one-shots, which I've never seen before. But at the end of Iron Man 2, Agent Coulson gets pulled to New Mexico to investigate Thor's hammer, right? But they have a one-shot in Marvel um, on, on, like, Disney+. Plus. It's like a three-minute video of Agent Coulson, like, stopping a robbery. And it was just, it was super fun. It was super fun. Beast No, they first selected Iron Man and War Machine. I then subbed and played with the newbie. He picked Ant-Man, and I had Scarlet Witch against Crossbones. Nice. That's awesome. 
Mozilla, I need to get the Green Goblin scenario. It's on. Dis oh yes, you absolutely should. the The scenario pack for Green Goblin is very, very good because it comes with this as well as Mutagen Formula. Both of them are very, very solid encounters. Hey BB, how's it going? So we got Agent Coulson. He's uh he's prevalent in the movie, and then because he does sneak in there in the after credit scene, we got Nick Fury as well. So I'm calling that technically in the movie. So we got Nick. Um, those are going to be our allies, and then we are going to be running a a protection deck, and the theme is repurpose. Two reasons: one, repurpose Iron Man is so incredibly fun, but also the entire like beginning when he is being held by the Ten Rings, I think they are called the the organization that that kidnapped Tony Stark there at the beginning of the movie. He repurposes his Jericho missiles into his first Iron Man suits, and so that's kind of the theme around why I went this route. Also, repurposes a lot of fun. So, so that is the idea. We are repurposing. We are becoming Iron Man with Agent Thir Agent Coulson and Nick Fury. And this is not how you are supposed to be playing the game legally. From like the rules standpoint, I could not include. Agent Coulson in this deck, but I, um, but we're breaking rules in this series. So here we are. I discover repurpose is very bad. <laughs> yes, yes. Collector one eats repul repurposes for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That that's that's a tough matchup. Collector one is. I I just replay Collector one, and he is he can just be so frustrating, especially in solo. I, I don't think I've ever played him in a multiplayer setting, but I in solo he is just not not something that I want to ever do again. I thought I had the win and then realized I couldn't discard it. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I, I I one thing I will say is I think Collector One would be better if he was not able to collect his own stuff. So like the side schemes and the minions and the attachments that go on the villain from like the Galactic Artifact set. If he wasn't able to put those in his own collection, it would make thematic sense as well as mechanic sense. It's like you just can't, you just lose. It's crazy. The fact that he collects from the villain deck is pretty dumb. Yeah. And he still would be very challenging in solo play if he could collect from his, or not collect from the villain. I still think that he would be a overtuned and unfun hero or villain to play against even if he couldn't collect from his own deck but still it's that just makes it so tough we're running a dauntless we are running an endurance we are running a couple of copies of defiance and then we've got our tech so we've got plasma pistol i got another one in here got a plasma pistol we've got our force field generators we've got our energy barriers these are all tech upgrades, which means that they lean and help get... I guess, hold on. We got one more. Sorry. We got electrostatic armor. These are all tech upgrades that help get Tony Stark to that maximum hand size of seven very quickly. Tony Stark in protection is really strong because of this lineup. You can hit that seven hand size very fast. And one of the things that we will probably want to be doing is not letting Norman scheme too much. And we're going to have to game the system a little bit to try and figure out how we can flip Norman and not immediately die. So I told D20, I always end up yelling at your streams because I never watch them live when you make mistakes. But it's midnight here and it's totally true. Please yell at me when I make mistakes. <laughs> uh, and then we've got, then we've got the doubles. All right, the doubles and the power of protection, so... That, which actually, I just kind of threw powers. We got two, four, six. We really don't need power protection in here, to be honest with you, but here we are. Well, given it's past midnight, I might be able to... Same. I, I, it is 10 a.m. here, and I'm not going to be the best at spotting my mistakes. So, um, okay, yeah. So, I guess that is the deck. That's kind of what I came up with. Any other ideas from a thematic standpoint that we could include... There really are not that many, I mean, we're really early into the MCU, so there really are not that many allies or other characters that we can utilize. Now, that changes in Iron Man 2, and we'll talk about that here once we do get to that game. And we have, we're starting to get a lot more options to choose from, which is very exciting. But curious if, there, if there's anyone that I missed. 
Iron Man protection is the best anyway. You got this. Oh, it's so much fun. It's so much fun. I should hopefully be getting a pretty fun mail day today. Nice. That's awesome. That's exciting. Okay. Let's talk about the, the villain deck as well. Hey, Trapid. How's it going? Good morning. The villain deck, we are playing against Risky Business, and we're, we're we're breaking some more rules. We are playing with two mod sets. There's only one mod set required, but we're playing with two. We're playing with Ransacked Armory, so just tech upgrades, as well as we're throwing in the experimental weapons. And so we are throwing, and then standard and expert. But we are here to add tech, and that's the entire idea around the movie. Yes, I'm using, yes, Green Goblin to represent Obadiah. Obadiah Stone? Is that his name? Is it Obadiah Stone? That doesn't sound right for some reason. Obadiah. Yeah, we have to get creative in some of these. Iron Man. Yeah, it's Stain. You can get them so quickly built too with the protection tech cards and force fields are made. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And oh, it, it's just so satisfying to be able to t roll on turn two to like roll up and have five hand size. And then you can really easily get to that seven. We will have to be a little careful, right? We have a threshold of seven here. We really don't want to lose this because we get a permanent hazard icon and that's just uh that's just horrible uh so we're gonna try and stay on one and we're gonna we're gonna mulligan fairly hard for some cheap tech upgrades so that we can hopefully flip up whenever he attacks he's placing counters so we're not taking damage so we have a little bit of time and so it's, it's just gonna be a timing game and i i have not practiced this game and so we will see how it goes but i do think that it will be a little bit more interesting than some of the other, like, stay down, thread out type strategies that you got. Hey, the Romeo, how's it going? You playing with the house rule that Norman has a crisis icon on his non-goblin side? I am not. No, I, <laughs> I didn't. That's interesting. No, but no, I, I'm not. I didn't even think about that. Hmm, that's interesting though. So it'd be a crisis icon on his Norman side. Are you planning a four players for the Avengers? I'm curious to see how you do Loki. I I have there there is I have thought about how we are gonna do some of the team up, and I would like to, and I have not talked to anybody about this yet, but I would like to do a a multiplayer game or multiplayer games for the the big movies, the team ups. It prevents gaming the scenario by camping on the Norman side for every turn. We can try it. We can try it. Yeah, sure, why not? We'll try that. Okay. That that makes sense. That makes sense. Huh. Okay. Okay. It's going to make it it's going to make it e that's going to make it even harder. Because Tony wants to stay in Alter Ego a little bit. And if we... Yeah. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Let's try it. Let's try it. Okay. So we got Hostile Takeover. Put the Criminal Enterprise environment into play. Criminal Enterprise states that it comes into play with two infamy counters on it. If there are no infamy counters, flip Norman Osborne. So he flips over into Green Goblin slash Obadiah. You've already made it harder by adding all that text, so you don't have to. We'll try it. Why not, right? Like, let, let's try it. If we lose, then we'll play it again without it. Um, I, I'm the yeah. These games, I am here to just kind of have some fun. <laughs> um, I had to keep it a secret. I refuse to break now. I will post pics in the disc. Ooh, ooh, okay. Now I'm now I'm excited. So once we do get those, then we get the state of madness. It comes into play with two madness counters. If there are no, then we flip it back over, back into the Norman Osborne, trying to figure out how to keep them in the Green Goblin because while he is in Norman Osborne, he cannot take any damage. So when Norman Osborne would take any amount of damage, instead remove that number of infamy counters from Criminal Enterprise. So while he's sitting in 
his Norman form, we it's like his alter ego. He he can't take any damage. So um so yeah. And then when he would attack, you instead place criminal or counters on criminal enterprise. And then same thing over here on the Green Goblin, whenever he would scheme uh remove one madness counter. So when completed, place one Per player infamy counters on criminal enterprise and then discard one card from each player's deck for each counter on criminal enterprise so we thread out at seven we are going to say that we have a crisis icon here so just the the house rule being that norman has a crisis icon on his on his norman side and not on his green goblin side which does force us to rush a little bit which i that's cool one of the things that I really hope to do is make sure that I get Pepper Potts into play, just thematically speaking. And it would be, I this is this is just fun. This is not actually what I'm trying to do, but it would be really cool to play Nick on the last turn or something, just because he's only in that in credit scene. But we'll see. Just from like a gameplay standpoint and needing to win, it, it could be, it could be. Um, it could be difficult to not play allies here. Alrighty, we got War Machine. Thematically, I can't play War Machine. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, repurpose. We got Force. Oh, there's Pepper. Let's go. I love seeing Pepper turn one. Such a good pull. We got a Force Field Generator. We got Pepper Pots. And we got Plasma Pistol. We will probably go ahead and mulligan the Force Field Generator. It's a little hard to do that. But since we're not really taking any attacks, we are, you know, we're sitting here with norman actually we we have to flip up we're going to have to flip up especially with this crisis we cannot threat we cannot lose this turn one um oh cool sweet thanks for joining josh so we got plasma pistol we got pepper the other thing that would be really nice here is if we could mulligan into a double we can activate pepper's pot's ability to get the double resources again and so we'll mulligan these four. Plasma Pistol is a cheap tech upgrade. We got, oh, the mark. And I played this wrong the entire time during the Hero Spotlight, so I apologize. But it is one threat from each scheme instead of two threat from a single scheme. It, it does not work like the power. There's a Dauntless. We'll probably not. There's Rocket Boots. That's also good. And an Energy Barrier. Let's go. Okay, so this is our opening hand. We do want to prioritize getting some of these tech upgrades especially maybe like these two and if we can get a two but let's see what we got for our future stability we got mark armor rocket boots and agent colson we will go ahead and take the rocket boots into our hand that's using his future oh wait hold on i needed to add ingenuity into this oh well here we are i thought about that i built the deck last night and after I, I finished, I was like sitting there thinking, I was like, wait, I didn't add ingenuity into it. And then, okay. If you're running this deck, I would highly, highly, highly recommend running ingenuity. Also, I don't have any of the resource generators. We're going to modify this real quick. We're going to take out the power of protections and we'll, we'll reshuffle and redo all of this. We'll take out the power of protections and add a Quinn carrier and an ingenuity. I just completely forgot to do that. So Quinn Carrier and Ingenuity help us with those resource generations. But we do not, we may not be able to get Pepper in our, um, yeah, Ingenuity is vital for Rocket Boots energy. Yeah, it's just, yeah. <laughs> and I, yeah, I didn't even have the Quinn Carrier in there. Honestly, you probably could go with even more synergy with or even more resource generators with iron man i always i i enjoy running like the helicarriers i really like the avengers mansion with him because he can he can typically pay for it colson is in is justice yes 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 the romeo so we are breaking all the deck building rules of marvel champions for this series and we are i yeah yeah we we are adding in we can add in allies from different aspects or different heroes if they appear in the movies. So, like, last time when we played Captain America, 
we added in the Winter Soldier from Black Widow's kit. So it we're we're breaking some we're breaking some rules, but it's all in the it's all it's all for fun. Okay, let's see. We got force field generator. We got endurance. We got a double. We got Colson, Stark Tower, and Plasma Pistol. Less exciting of an opening. Also, whenever we flip to uh, Green Goblin, we're going to be taking four indirect damage. And then on stage three, we take uh, four damage, which is not great. I do want to keep strength. I think if we can hang on to force field generator, that'd be pretty awesome. Um... Stark Tower could be interesting. Mm. It's like, no, I need to... We're going to mulligan these three. Come on, give me Pepper. There's Quinn Carrier. That's nice. Ingenuity is great as well. And then Repulsor Blast is not going to be played. Sweet. Okay. So, oh yeah, and we got a Futurist ability. We get to look at the top three cards and take one of them into our hand. Let's uh, let's do some math here. We're going to drop an Ingenuity. We are going to... We're probably going to want to roll up here because we're going to be at three he's going to scheme for two and then it has a fairly decent uh distribution of higher end boost icons in this deck hey canadian mustache how's it going and so we will probably scheme out if we do not flip up that being said we want to get a plasma pistol be nice to get a quinn carrier i just don't know if i can afford the quinn carrier here And then we could, if we take the energy barrier, we can play the energy barrier. So let's take the energy barrier. And that's going to give us a hand size of like four plus a resource generator on the table. Yeah, Norman is standing in for Obadiah. Ah, take energy barrier, you won't play two force fields or a war machine, if anything. True. Yes. Yep. Okay. So while we are here and while we have the genius trait, we're going to use a strength to play an ingenuity that can be exhausted to generate a mental resource. We will use a repulsor blast and a force field generator to play a energy barrier. And then we will use an ingenuity and a quin carry to play a plasma pistol. Hand size of three. It. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I, I cannot risk pushing right now. And since we have that crisis icon, what I think what we have to do is flip up plasma pistol, attack, flip Norman, we'll take damage or whatever, and then we can flip back down next turn. You flip up on three hand size. I, I think that that, that that is the right strategy here. Um, and we can... Yeah, I think I think so. So let's uh let's go ahead and flip up. I do think that we flip Norman here just so we can have him sitting in alter ego for or having Norman sit in villain form, right? Sitting in Green Goblin form, so that we have a couple more safe turns in alter ego where he cannot scheme. But remember, I love Hulk, so I'm horrible. <laughs> nice. Okay, so let's go here and we'll attack and use plasma pistol to go ahead and flip criminal enterprise. State of Madness comes in with two Madness counters. And we flip here. We're going to take four indirect damage. So we got... Oh, we're going to... This is going to hurt. Uh, one, two, three. And then we'll use an energy barrier to hit him for one. We'll stand up. He, he hits for four. I also forgot about that. That's insane. Hmm. Okay, here we are. We got Rocket Boots. That's good. We've got Repurpose. Not going to be playing that in a Plasma Pistol, which we probably... Yeah, we probably won't. Well, we could with the future stability, actually. So, Okay, so we're going to add one threat to Hostile Takeover. I actually just played this matchup over the weekend. Risky Business is a little bit more tricky with Iron Man than other heroes because of his turn 1-2. Yep, yep. Canonically, Tony is trapped in a cave right now. He's going to take some... That's true. That is very true. I like that. Let's go, Romeo. <laughs> so, Green Goblin's attacking us for four. Which is probably a six. 
I'm gonna. I, I think I'm gonna defend here. But if I defend, then I don't get to. I I'm gonna defend here. There's no reason. I I need to. I need to defend here. So, and then we can use ingenuity. The defend and energy barrier should save us. So we're defending. We got four plus three G's. Okay. So four plus three is seven, six, five. We take five damage. One, two, three, four, five. Down to one. We'll throw one more over at Green Goblin. And then our encounter card. It's a hired gun. Choose to either give the villain one face down boost card or place two infamy counters on Criminal Enterprise. Here you go. There's a boost card. We can't. Criminal Enterprise is not in play. Does that mean that the Green Goblin is representing the Ten Rings right now? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because, right, Obadiah hired the Ten Rings to take out Tony. And so, yeah, yeah, it, it's, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a hand wave. It all works out. It all works out. But now we have this two scheme. Oh, geez. Jeez. Okay. Um. We'll go Ingenuity for our Rocket Boots. We get plus one hit points. Doubling those hit points. Let's go. And we will flip down. We'll use a Futurist, Nick, the Helmet, and the Armor. We cannot play the Armor, but that would be really nice to have pulled the Armor. We're going to have to take the Helmet. And we will use a Repurpose to play the Helmet. And we've got... We're going to hang on to the Plasma Pistol. Sheer Boredom, thank you for the gift. And Tier 1 sub to Villain Theory. Congrats, Villain Theory. We'll make it work, Canonic. Yeah, exactly. It'll be fine. And I guess before we before we flip up, let's just go ahead and use a, a one, one hit there. We got Plasma Pistol. Do we hang on to Plasma Pistol? We're sitting at one, two, three, four. We're sitting at a five hand size. Plasma Pistol is nice. Plasma Pistol could actually help us kill the hired gun. Here I am lurking all innocent and someone has the audacity to give you a sub. <laughs> oh my goodness. We got it. We got it. We got it. We have the helmet now. We have the helmet, which is nice, which can help us remove some threat. But we are going. Ooh, if we can get our if we can get our arc reactor, that would help us ready, help us heal, because I think that's going to be the biggest issue. Is we're we're gonna. I think we stay in alter ego for a while. Anyways, uh, with that being said, let's toss the plasma pistol. I'd rather try and draw into the arc reactor, so we will stand up. We got repurpose electrostatic armor. We've got another rocket boots. Slow and steady. Defiance. Energy. Give me pepper. Repulsor. Okay. Thank the algorithm. Are we running Tony as is? I modified the deck. So, uh, Shearboard and Roberto, what we're doing right now is we're playing through the cinematic universe. And so we've played like in chronological order. So we played Captain America, we played Captain Marvel, and now we are playing. Uh, Iron Man 1, our next game is going to be Iron Man 2. And so we're creating thematic matchups as well as thematic deck builds in order to like represent the video. And so right now we're playing Tony versus Green Goblin. He's representing Obadiah. And we are building a... We built in like all the allies that are in the movie. So we're breaking deck building rules. So we have like justice cards. But because Coulson appeared in the movie, he, in this series we're allowing him to be in the deck. We have Nick in here because he shows up in the, the end credit scene. And then um, this is all build, building around a card called Repurpose where you take you can take an upgrade and like give yourself a, a benefit by turning it into something else. And that's what he does for that first, uh, first suit while he's in the caves. So it, it's a fairly heavily, heavily modified deck. Okay, so we're going to place one. He schemes, which we remove a counter. And then we got two here. Solid time. Let's go. And we got a encounter card, Tech Gauntlets. So attach the minion gets plus three hit points. And his attach to the minion with the most remaining hit points. If you cannot, it gains surge. Gets plus one attack. And he gets overkill. That's not good. That's really bad, actually. 
I don't know how we... Uh, this is tough. Let's use Futurist. We got two Defiances and a Power Gauntlets. We'll take the Power Gauntlets. And we will start trying to build more. We got Power Gauntlets onto the table for an Energy. We have a Repulsor Blast. We could Repulsor Blast this higher gun away. But, I mean, we're still sitting at a... Looking at an attack of four. Actually, let's go... We have a Defiance. If we can hang on to the Defiance, that'd actually be pretty nice. We got another copy of Rocket Boots out here. So that's going to give us one hit point. So we're up to th three. We could heal... But okay, let's uh, let's look at the math here. I don't want to get rid of these. We have a five health minion here, and I think if we don't kill the minion, we we do die. We have two damage if we go with Ariel here. Blast him! I think so. I think we repulsor blast here, kill the minion, and we actually may run electrostatic, or we may drop that. And so we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have a max hand size already. So we don't necessarily need electrostatic armor, but if we go uh, repulsor blast for the hired gun, we probably kill the hired gun. We have the mark. Five helmet to knock this off so we don't lose there. Green Goblin's going to attack us for a lot of damage. We have a Defiance, but he has two boost cards. We will heal. One, two, three. And we'll flip up. Let's use Electrostatic Armor to play Repulsor Blast. So we deal one damage. And we discard the top five cards of our deck. One. Two, three, four. No, the arc reactor. So that's two, four, six, nine damage. That's way enough damage to kill the hired gun. I rarely get electrostatic armor on the table with Iron Man, even though it's in my deck. I just don't. I really don't play it that frequently, but if you draw it in your opening hand, the one cost tech upgrade is excellent. And then if you need it to like fill out the hand size, it's great. Or it's a it's a lightning resource. If uh, it, for your for your blast, we will ingenuity. So we'll go ahead and power gauntlets for two. Mark helmet for one. I guess we we did that. Hmm. I find by end game I have a lot of energy barriers and can go force field. So defense, be yeah, defense definitely becomes redundant. Um, it's just to help rush. So we'll stand up. We're going to keep Defiance in our hand. We got Power Gauntlets. Supersonic Punch. Repulsor Blast. Pepper. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's a Force Field Generator. We'll place one. Green Goblin's attacking. We will Defiance this boost card and he's attacking for four plus a boost card we're sitting at six i think we have to defend again we'll defend four place one infamy counter on criminal enterprise if you cannot remove one madness counter from state of madness so that's going to flip state of madness back to criminal enterprise he attacked us for five we'll uh How does this work? It's also good. Oh, yeah. A good repurpose. That is a really... Yeah, that, that's a good point. So, the rules expert here. Boost happens before damage is applied. So, this flips. Does it become a scheme? Because I flip criminal enterprise. And this is a constant ability. Or it's a forced interrupt. So, does the boost take priority over the force interrupt and now this is a scheme of three 
I actually don't know how that works. Or does the attack go through and then he switch? It's already in progress, so I think he's attacking with zero attack. Which means that we would add here. I think it stays in attack, but that does mean he attacks for zero. I I I will take that. I think villain theory is correct. When he would when he would attack, place two so he we place two infamy counters here. But that interrupts the attack. That interrupts the attack. And he's. I think we've already passed the forced interrupt phase of the actual attack. So I think I think you're right. I think he's attacking for one. With like the private security specialist. As the one boost. So it'd be an attack of zero. <laughs> uh. Yeah. When he would attack. That is passed. We are not adding things to Criminal Enterprise. That that window has already passed. I fairly rarely play Risky Business these days. It's funky. Once attacking, though, and at this point, it can't change from being an attack. That makes sense. And we have passed the Force Interrupt position of a when he attacks trigger. And so we go here to a private security special. He's attacking for, I, would, I think it's a attack of one. That's how I'm going to play it. Because this comes out as a boost card of one. He's initiated the attack. We... We look and count. There's a oh, there is a ruling in the 1.4 rules reference. Of course there is. Thanks, Romeo. Um, yep, you got it right. Sweet. Let's go. So I defended, so we take no damage. We're gonna take a payoff. So boost, place one infamy counter on criminal enterprise. If you cannot oh wait, that's a boost. This is a additional card. But the problem here is is that we are playing that this now has a crisis. And we could f technically flip up or flip him up, which is fine. Thanks to Google. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay. So. Jeez. Okay. We need, <laughs> we need to get rid of this. <laughs> um, we can flip Norman. By hitting with like a power gauntlet if we have aerial. So that's going to be two damage. That's going to be enough to flip Norman. Really need that arc reactor. We lost the arc reactor. Yep. We lost it. Which it'll come back. It'll come back. Hopefully. If we're doing that. I think what I want to do. Is can we can we do pepper? No we, we can't. Oh we could do plasma pistol. I'm trying to figure out how to do two damage. We're not going to be able to get rid of this payoff, which is going to be tough. But I think what we do is we drop the force field generator. We flip Norman with like plasma pistol and power gauntlets. And then we remove one threat. We, we roll down and then we roll down. And just like have this system be game, gamed again. Okay. That's what we're going to do. We're going to go these three for Miss Pepper Pots. Because we have to do that thematically speaking. We're going to go Pepper, Ingenuity, and a Plasma Pistol for Force Field Generator. That's going to come in with six. We're going to go Power Gauntlets and Plasma Pistol. To flip Norman. We're going to take four indirect damage. Just going to clear... A lot of that. This goes away. And then helmet's going to take one off of hostile takeover. And we're going to flip down to Tony. We're not going to use the genius or the futurist ability just because we wouldn't be able to pay for anything. I guess. Well, actually, we might as well. We'll do this. We get to take one of these and. I don't really even want any of those, so it worked out. We're going to be resolving three encounter cards, which is never a good never a good sign, but here we are. Oof. Oof. Yeah, ha adding the crisis icon onto Norman's side makes it really interesting. Thematically, I'm not sure if it makes sense, but it does make it a much diff more difficult scenario. Uh, that payoff is going to kill me. That payoff is going to kill me. Okay. 
That's Obadiah. <laughs> we got six cards. Two, four, six. Give me a arc reactor. We got Defiance, Repurpose, Repulsor Blast, Plasma Pistol, Defiance, and a Stark Tower. This is not what we were hoping for. Ah, gross. We're going to add one. Green Goblin's going to scheme. So we'll remove one. And then we will deal out two encounter cards. Futurist will get it for you. That's what I'm feeling. All in a day's work. Place two infamous encounters. If you cannot, remove two madness counters from State of Madness. So we're going to flip back. No! No! Um, place two infamy counters on Criminal Madness. Criminal Enterprise. Uh oh. Uh oh. This is up there for easiest scenario in the game by your ranking, but Iron Man is tricky and you've managed to make it even tougher with some of the thematic rules. Very interesting to see how see it played that way. Yeah. The I I agree. I'm I'm keen to see in this Iron Man movie where Obadiah wins. <laughs> no, Shadows of the Past. No, that's Iron Man 2. What are we doing? Whiplash. Coming in. We're me we're messing around with the uh with the timing of things now. So Whiplash comes in. He has retaliate one. He's a two three. And then we've got a imminent overload. Comes in with four. And an acceleration icon. Don't worry, guys. Don't worry, y'all. We're we're gonna lose it regardless. Obadiah beating Iron Man so badly that his timeline. <laughs> Don't worry, Whiplash. We're coming for you next game, too. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Oh, my goodness. Without the Crisis Rule, I think it's the easiest scenario in the game, especially with recommended mod set. This is looking kind of dicey, though. Maybe Whiplash represents when Iron Man takes out those soldiers at the midway point of the film? Yes. Yeah. All right, wait, are you, talk are you talking about, like, when he, when he goes in to... Like after he's seen that the Stark Jericho missiles have been sold to the the um, the bad guys, and he goes in randomly, and then all like the the fighter pilots try and take him out. I love that that scene. Is and he like calls up, uh, calls up uh, James or yeah, Rhodes. Rhodes. What is it? What does he call him? It's not Rhodes. It's a uh, Rody. 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 Calls up like Rody. Absorbing Man, not the easiest. Yeah, Rody. Thank you. Thank you. Uh I think with I think I think I would say that risky business is the easiest just because of how you can manipulate it. Without the crisis icon on here, you can literally just have him sit in Norman Osborne. And he only adds one token on Criminal Enterprise whenever he would attack. And damage is really easy. You think Rhino is the easiest? In solo, I, I think he's actually one of the harder ones in solo. Like, Tony would have a really tough time beating Rhino by himself. Okay, what are we doing? Let's get, do a Futurist. Got one, two, three. Got a Repulsor Blast, a War Machine. Hmm. Repulsor Blast is interesting here. I also have a Repulsor Blast. I guess we'll take War Machine. We also could double repurpose this turn. I don't know what that would do for us. But that that is actually... that That's an interesting idea. If we double repurpose, we can go repurpose our energy barrier. And we have a fourth thwart. We can take this out. We can take this out. We can take this out with just like our first repurpose. Take this out. And then repurpose again. And take this out if we use like a repulsor blast on Norman. 
Mm. I know Solo is tough with seven threat, but I still think he's easy. Yeah. BB, I think that's the best adjective for it. He can be really swingy. He can be he can be insane. If you draw like those two charges and he's attacking you for like 12 damage. Okay, cool. Rhino is very weird in solo. He's super easy until you can draw that advance. Now that Professor X, Dazzler, Psylocke exists, I think running those and just leaving Confuse up effectively saves you from them. Yeah, that's true. Okay. If we go with the double repurpose turn, I feel like that's going to set us back a lot. Hey, Nitro, thank you for the subscription with Prime. I appreciate you. Happy Monday. We, okay. Yeah, so. And then we still have to figure out how to deal with Whiplash. If we flip him, we take four indirect damage. But I feel like that. I feel like that may be the best thing that we can do here is repurpose like I don't want to repurpose the energy barrier because I think it's dangerous. I just don't have like, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I need to get a plasma pistol on the table because we're about to lose the force field. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I think we lose this. I think I think we just commit to losing the main. So I, I I don't think that I can flip Norman right now and survive. The things in solo advance the amount of damage he can do in expert. Rhino is on the easier side, but I wouldn't say he's easy. It's probably just that I played Rhino the most out of any villain. I feel like I'm afraid of the encounter cards because I'm so used to him. Yeah. Especially if you put a better encounter. Yeah, that's true. I need to get rid of this. I think we repurpose once. I think we repurpose once. And we drop a plasma pistol so that we maintain our seven hand size. We go up to hero. We figure out what to do with the whiplash, which actually is just the force field generator and the energy barrier. That's enough to take care of whiplash's attack. Norman stays here. But he will scheme on the second because we can't we can't remove a threat from from this hostile takeover. So in stage one of the villain, we're gonna push hostile takeover. Hmm. But if we repurpose, we get rid of this payoff. We are at six health. Yeah, we're we're just gonna go to stage two and we're gonna just have to deal with the encounter cards. We are what are we're at 14 health. Once we get built out, yeah, here we go. Here we go. It's just what we're going to do. We'll take War Machine, I guess. War Machine is also kind of interesting because we could drop War Machine and just use him as a shield. Is that insane? Probably. Which actually means that if we, yeah, we actually don't need to repurpose at this point because we can just thwart this payoff. And this doesn't matter this turn. We can, we can take care of it another turn, but it does not really matter this turn. Because it doesn't... Yeah, we're fine. That being said, we probably could drop a War Machine. We go Plasma Pistol for a Stark Tower. Stark Tower pulls back a War Machine. And then we've got... We got enough to... We got way more than enough to pay for War Machine. And Plasma Pistol. No, we, we cannot we can't pay for both of them. We cannot get a plasma pistol on the table. And a war machine. Or and a Stark Tower. But we we can do like plasma pistol and a war machine easy. May would rather play the repulsor blast. War machine is just not good. He's so expensive. Rhino and a mess of thing or power drain isn't easy. That's true. But remember, my opinion does not count for much. <laughs> you think Hulk is the strongest one there is? Nice. Nice. We have an answer to Whiplash. And so I'm thinking that we do drop War Machine. I think, I'm thinking that we do get him out there. 
So let's go repurpose in a Stark Tower for a Plasma Pistol. Let's go Ingenuity, Defiance, Defiance. Let's hang on to a Repulsor Blast. Ingenuity, Pepper Pots, Defiance, Defiance for a War Machine. We'll hang on to the Repulsor Blast just so we have it next turn. And we've got Tony flipping up. We're going to thwart here. Take out the payout. The payoff. We've got... The, the other option here is to not hang on to the Repulsor Blast, toss that, use Ingenuity to give us Aerial, and we can kill Whiplash. That's what we're going to do. So instead of using Ingenuity to pay for War Machine, we're going to use Repulsor Blast, meaning that we still have Ingenuity. We're going to give ourselves Aerial. The Mark Helmet is going to remove one from here. Um, Power Gauntlets is going to hit Whiplash. Retaliate will hit Force Field Generator for two. War Machine will hit Whiplash for two. And the Retaliate does not trigger on that second one. And, oop, that's not how that works. Let's just go ahead and knock one of these things. We're shooting at his, I, I just picture this like plasma pistol just shooting at his like office building. <laughs> okay, let's stand up. This has turned into a much more interesting game than I was expecting. And so that's good. So we have seven, right? We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we are good there. Got electrostatic armor, energy, Supersonic Punch, Endurance, that's going to be helpful. Jeez, two, four, five. Energy Barrier, let's go, and a Repurpose. Things are going to be interesting now. Hulk is strong. He holds up all the other heroes in the ring. <laughs> Amazing. I saw someone suggest using Ship Command as the modular when playing Hulk, so you get the Milano for Wild Resource Generation. That would be cool. That would be cool. Also, Rhino might be one of the few scenarios Hulk is strong in. Yeah, Hulk Hulk has gotten better. I And Hulk is a viable hero to play. It's just that he, he when looking at all of the options, Hulk is not Hulk is not the best. Hulk in space, right? Okay. So we're gonna place two, which pops. Place one per on criminal enterprise. One per player. Then discard one player or one card. We got one, two, three, four, because of four. Oh, and this goes up two per player. This comes in with one. Now we have one of those. It's tough. It's tough. Okay, Norman is going to attack, so we're going to place, this is where I start running out of counters. And we've got two cards. First one is Master Plan. Yikes. So that's going to add four to the Imminent Overload. Place four threat on each side scheme. There are no side schemes. And then we've got the Exosuit. So you get a plus one, plus one. Cool. Cool. Okay. We are we are near the points where we can flip norm. I mean, we have to do five damage now. Gross. <laughs> well, I guess Supersonic can deal eight of that. I'm wondering if there is a better option. Let's go ahead and at least use an energy for an energy barrier. I'm going to make this a little bit cleaner. We're going to move this over here. I was saying in D20 stream earlier, if this game lasts 20 years, I might get my World War Hulk box, but D20 burst my bubble saying he reckoned the game only had 15 years of life. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I I'm I, I could see a World War Hulk box. The, the, what the nice thing is, and we have precedent with both like Netrunner and Lord of the Rings, where after the game has been 
unofficially not supported from the from FFG, people take up arms and will 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 uh will make custom content for it. Let's go ingenuity to give us aerial. We've got pepper and a supersonic punch to deal eight, which is going to remove all of these and flip the state of madness. We got two. This goes away. And Norman flips. We get four indirect damage. Oh, we have to do this. Force field generator takes one. Two. Three will hit Green Goblin. Down to 13. Got one more. We will just take it. So we're down to five health. The helmet's going to remove one from each. Power Gauntlets is going to deal two. One, two. War Machine is going to be a nice blocker for us. We got two damage from War Machine. One, two. So I'm, we're at nine. I need a force field generator before I can flip goblin just because I cannot take four damage right to the face right now and still sur I mean, hypothetically, I probably could, but yeah, but after fantastic four street level heroes, etc., and a game of the thrones. Oh, I didn't realize that. I didn't realize that game of thrones had a community following after warhammer 40k conquest. Oh, cool. I just had only heard about the Netrunner and the Lord of the Rings. That's interesting. I reckon they could do a lot of Persona cards for Moon Knight if they ever got there. Moon Knight could be... Yeah, Moon, some of the custom content that Moon Knight has been built around has been really interesting. Different alter ego identities, different alter e or different hero identities. It, I think just... Uh, I, I don't want to miscredit someone. Someone has a really good Moon Knight, a really interesting Moon Knight uh, third party or... Custom build. Let's go repurpose for a endurance. One, two, three. Defiance for an electrostatic armor, really just to get it out of our deck. I guess we'll plasma pistol for one. Fort 2 here, I guess. And we'll call that a turn. Stand up, stand up. Moon Knight with three alter egos and two different hero forms. Could yeah. Yeah. I I am oh my gosh. I am so excited for Thursday. Where it's basically been confirmed that we are getting I think it has been confirmed. I I would be very, very shocked if what they put out saying, you know, April 6th is the whole net or like the, the adventure starts on April 6th. I would be, there's no way we're not getting an article on April or on Thursday. So I am so pumped for you. We got repulse. We got Nick. Nick is actually really big here. We got a force field generator. We got our armor. Okay. 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 Feeling better. We've got three, two, and then one. Goblin's attacking us for five plus a boost, which War Machine's going to step in and take. Uh, plus one. Bye-bye, War Machine. We got two encounter cards coming. Our first one is a private security specialist with guard. That's, And then the villain gets retaliate one. Okay. That's not good. But we have we have some options now. Okay. So we've got a genius. A 
Okay. We we have to get Nick onto the table. So we'll go Genius. We'll go Dauntless. And nope, not Pepper, not Ingenuity. Maybe the armor or the plasma pistol. Hmm. We're gonna go with the armor. But we're gonna do it like this. To play Nick Fury. When he comes into play, we're gonna draw three. We got Quinn Carrier, Supersonic Punch, and the Arc Reactor. Now we are talking. Okay. Let's do Pepper and Supersonic Punch to play Quinn Carrier. Let's use... We may not flip Green Goblin this turn, but maybe next turn. Ingenuity is going to give us Aerial. We'll remove one and one. Power Gauntlets is going to deal two here. Nick's going to take them out. We got the... Oh, we got the Quinn Carrier, too. We got the Quinn Carrier. We could go Repulsor Blast. Do we push Green Goblin? Can we take four in the face right now? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Nick Fury, we're at the po yeah, we're at the post credit scene already. <laughs> That's some Aeon <laughs> discarding, right? Yep, 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 yep. Do we also want to maybe get rid of these? He comes in with like twenty two health on this second side, right? Yeah, twenty two is a lot. We got Colson coming up. Colson can take a hit for us. Do we have another force field generator that we have not? We also have a. So these last two cards are a force field generator and Agent Colson. So those are both very defensive cards for us. Give her to retaliate. Okay. We'll go here and a. Plasma Pistol to get rid of the Retaliate. And then we'll Force Field Generator Repulsor Blast to drop Arc Reactor. We'll thwart two here. We're ready. Thwart two here. We'll stand up. Knowing that we have Colson, we have no prep cards, so Colson is kind of funny, but we're we're gonna be doing three cards. That's tough. Colson force field generator, and then we go to damage now, which damage at this point is not that hard to come by in Iron Man, right? We got our repulsor blast hitting for seven ish, probably on average, and then. We got supersonic punches hitting for eight. So, I mean, it, it would be... It, we, we we need an answer to the four damage whenever we flip. But we've got 30 damage to deal, which is not honestly that bad. We could flip down. No, we have Nick. We have Nick. Never mind. No need to flip down. We got Nick. Uh... Repur oh, here we go. We also got a repurpose. There's a plasma pistol. Force field generator. That's the answer. There's supersonic. There's eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. And a Stark Tower. A few repulsor blasts and you'll be done. Yeah. Okay. We're going to add three. Goblin's attacking for five plus boost card. Nick's going to take it. There goes the advance, which actually does not really matter. Um, Nick's gone. Now we have three encounter guards. Caught off guard. Discard an upgrader support you control. No! no I'm just <laughs> Electrostatic armor. Uh, 
Uh, for attached to the minion with the most remaining hit points. If you cannot search the encounter deck for a discard pile for a minion and put it into play, engage with you and attach this card to it. Attached minion gets plus four hit points and gains retaliate two. Okay, so private security specialist, armor guard, both have guards, so that's probably not the best option. Hired gun. It's probably a hired gun. Let me just check and see if I'm missing anything. I don't I don't want the guard, that's the thing. I'm wondering if I can just sit it out and just ignore it for the rest of the game. You'd be attacking for two each round. We've got a push this turn with the supersonic punch. Force field generator can soak. We have Colson, which can also block a hit. But we we actually may flip down. We flip down that. Higher gun is going to scheme. Higher gun is probably the weakest option too. That's what I'm thinking. If we, especially if we can stay up. And then we've got an advance, so we're gonna remove one from here. Okay. Okay. Alrighty, squad. We are. Things are getting interesting. Okay, 22 damage. I don't think we are at a spot where we can do that right now. That being said, we have... We can repurpose. From a basic attack standpoint, we have an attack of one. We have a repurposed attack of three. So that before, Then we have an arc reactor for another three. So that's seven. We have the damage from the repulsor, or not the repulsor, I'm sorry, the supersonic punch to push Green Goblin. That's going to push him into seven, would put us at 15 more damage to deal. Force field generator, or we probably have Coulson step in front of the hit. Force field generator then soaks the hired guns attack. That takes us to 13. I think we hang, this was something, and I apologize, I don't remember who said this on one of my videos, but hanging on to repurposes is actually, like, really strong here, too. Like, we don't have to use the repurpose this turn, but if we can use it next turn, then we have a, a better setup and a better idea of exactly what we're doing. And if we can draw into another repurpose, then you can repurpose multiple times and get multiple, multiple activations out of it while leaving some of our tech on the table for the benefits that it's going to give us going into three repurposes in one turn. That would definitely do it. That would, that would definitely do it. Uh, <laughs> okay. Sounds good to me. Let's go. Okay, let's do Ingenuity to give us Aerial. We'll go Helmet to remove here and here. Just going to clear that. Just going to clear this. This no longer has a window. I guess this does have a window defeated. We lose the game. Uh, <laughs> we've got a Quinn Carrier. I don't have any doubles, so Miss Pepper Potts. And a Stark Tower to play this Force Field Generator. Two, four, six. Oh, we can't play Colson and the punch. Okay. So if we play Colson, we don't have any prep cards, so we can't go get that. But it's like, would it, would it actually be. It's actually going to be better if we don't do the helmet or we don't do the giving us aerial. So we're going to actually go one there and we're going to keep ingenuity. We're going to just use the helmet to take care of the side scheme because if we're not attacking, we can, we can thwart with Iron Man instead. So no, but that, that means we get rid of our repurpose as well. He's going to be attacking us for five, which is just not something that we can 
comfortably entertain happening. Um, so I think I think agent I think Colson needs to get on the table. I just don't know if we can push him this turn. Okay, let's go Ingenuity. Let's go Plasma Pistol and Force Field Generator for an Agent Colson. He's going to come out. We search our deck and discard pile, and we shuffle our deck technically. I think it has to be done. Has to. We have to put Colson out. Colson push some repurpose and blast. You'll be fine probably. Which I mean, like we haven't seen any of our any of our blast, and so. How was I going to pay for supersonic? I, I I wasn't. I can't pay for the supersonic punch in Coulson. Coulson will thwart to here. Iron Man will. Or do we repurpose? Do we repurpose here and use Iron Man to push rather than the supersonic punch to push? Because if we have an attack of, he's at eight. We have an attack of one, takes him to seven. We can repurpose energy barrier, whatever. Attack for three, ready. Attack for three more, plus the plasma pistol. That could that could kill him. And then we're sitting at one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're still at seven hand size. Does Goblin do anything with? Yeah, it's four damage. He deals four damage and is not indirect. So, but other than that, his stats are pretty good. So I think we will do that, actually. Let's, uh, oh, we had ingenuity. So in that matter, we'll give ourselves the plus one, or we'll give ourselves the aerial. Um, so Mark Helmet took all of, took the last one off of here. So we are going to attack with Green Goblin. Oh, we could keep Plasma Pistol because we have Power Gauntlets, too. Okay, so we'll attack with Iron Man. We will repurpose... Actually, we'll repurpose the Plasma Pistol then. So we get to stand up. We have plus two attack. We will attack for three. One, two, three. We will ready one, two, three with another attack. And the Power Gauntlets is going to hit him for two, which will push to stage three. Deal four damage to each player. That's going to be soaked by this force field generator. And he has 22 health. Okay. Okay. We will hang on to the supersonic punch. And we'll stand up. We will draw one, two, three, four... Five, six, seven, eight. So we're good. We got a repurpose. Perfect. Genius, which is excellent. Mark armor. Solid repurpose target. Two, four, five, six, seven. A repulsor blast. Ooh. Let's see what happens. We're going to add two thread here. Supersonic punch and three blasts. Here we go. Yeah, only one, right? Only one. No. Uh, Goblin's attacking us for five plus a boost. Colson's gonna step in, place one infamy counter. We're gonna flip state of madness. No, actually, that may not matter. Juicy hand. Hey, 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 how y'all doing? Hey, how's it going? Okay, so this is gonna flip him. He's going to attack for one. So Colson actually doesn't die, hilariously enough. And then this hired gun is going to attack for two. That's going to eat the force field generator. We got two cards coming in hot. The first one being jetpack. Attach to the minion with the most remaining hit points. When the attached minion would take any amount of damage from an attack, discard the top card of the encounter deck. Reduce the damage from that attack by the number of boost icons. That's fine. Higher gun is hanging out anyways. Another payoff.
Every day you catch a stream is a good one. Nice. Oh, thank you. Okay. So, okay. Can we... We could take a hit of four. Do we have 22 damage? That's the question. That is the question. Okay. So, we have a supersonic punch for eight. We have a power gauntlets for two. The power gauntlets flips criminal enterprise. So, we have to deal... Uh, 22 minus 8 is 14. We have 14 to deal. We have an Iron Man, which takes us to 13. We can repurpose the... I mean, heck, with this hand, we can repurpose the Mark V armor. So that's 4. 4. We ha I think we have it. What do you think about the 6th? I'm so pumped. I'm so excited for the for Thursday. It's going to be so much fun. I am... Oh, my goodness. I'm so, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Also, we've got eight. We got two damage here from when Norman flips. Man, we are feeling pretty good here. Let's go ahead and give us Ariel. Power Gauntlets is going to flip us. Boom. Norman flips. We deal four damage to each player. We got one, two, one, two on him. And then we take two. We're down to six. Let's go ahead and use a genius for a supersonic punch. That's going to deal eight damage. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, down to 12. We're going to go ahead and do pepper and a Quinn carrier for a Mark five armor. That's not going to hang out for very long. And so I will adjust it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Anyone else thinks that Tony would own Goblin and comics? Not sure if they fought before. I have no idea if they fought before, but yeah, absolutely. They would they would definitely uh <laughs> he would definitely own own Tony. Or own uh Norman. Let's go Defiance for a repulsor blast. We're gonna deal one damage. We've got No. There's one, two, three. So seven or six more damage. One, two, three, four, five, six. Down to five. So we should be good here. We will attack for one. We will repurpose the Mark armor. Stand up. And then we will attack for four for the win. Did you only pay two resources? No, I used um, Pepper and Quinn Carrier. And Genius was on top of my discard pile. So Pepper generated two resources. And then Quinn Carrier was the third. Nicely done. Let's go. Yeah. Oof. That was... They did... Norman took over the Avengers during the Dark Avengers era. He basically came to... Oh, interesting. Supersonic Punch was on top. Oh. Oh, it was? Oh, yeah, you're right. It was. Okay. Yeah, I, I had strength. Yeah. <laughs> good Good call. Thank you. Good call. Um. Yeah, we... Yeah, we, we were... We were very, very, very... Much over damage there. So we had another attack for four. He's Iron Man can go crazy. It's so cool. Um, had to at least spot one roll correction. Yeah, right there at the end. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Nice. Iron Monger is down. He is. So we are going to be doing one more game today. We're going to be playing through Iron Man 2. So I'm going to go to the Be Right Back screen. We're going to clean up. And when we come back. We'll talk about how we're going to thematically play through Iron Man 2. See you all soon.